in America at County Fair, you throw darts at balloons. In Soviet Russia, KGB throw darts at you. That, <laughs> that's a Yakov Smirnov joke. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yes. Very, very relevant. Uh. Yeah. Alexa, I just love this. He loved being able to go to the county fair and or whatever it is, the town fair. They, they have any just the fair that the mayor is presenting. Like right. the mayor gets to put on his own fair. OK, sure. That's how it yeah. works. I mean, it is for 4th of July, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. It's oh, okay. Yeah, but it, we get all kinds of uh, discussions of, of the U.S., <laughs> um, things that America is um, in this episode, and we're going to get into that. Absolutely. Um, um, he hello, and welcome to Ignore the Bell. I'm Nathan. And I'm Tyler. Yeah, I've got so many thoughts on this whole thing. A lot of this just feels like such a caricature of what middle America is. It feels, and I don't want to be too critical of this because I don't know whether they're going for a parody here or whether it's supposed to be sincere. But part of this kind of feels like what coastal elites think happens in middle America. Mm. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's like... yeah. <laughs> and that that's exactly what a, a Soviet person would think is going on. Um, in any case, uh, we do have a sponsor for today's episode. And by the way, we're, um, we're, we're going through every episode of Stranger Things Season 3. And this is going to be a review slash discussion slash reaction to Episode 7, Stranger Things Season 3, Episode 7, The Bite. Um, and so before we get into that, uh, we've got our sponsor, California Skateboarding University, particularly their medical program, uh, you need to apply today because if you want to get a quick medical degree, then all that you have to do is go to California University Skateboarding School or California Skateboarding University. I apologize. Uh, they're a newer school, uh, but <laughs> yeah, their, their medical programs are excellent. Nursing, um, you know, whether you want to become a doctor, whatever you want, they've got it. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, that's that's all you need in order to treat any kind of injury, no matter how, you know, out of this world or uh, piercing. Oh, yeah. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Doesn't matter what it is. It's like, you know, I think something's wrong with my thyroid. Don't worry. I have skateboarding experience. <laughs> I use this. Got it. Um, all right. So if you have not noticed what that's a reference to, you have not watched this episode. But Max is apparently a doctor now because she skateboards. Yep. <laughs> yeah. All right, all right, folks, we're going to get right into the discussion. I hope you enjoy. Stranger Things, Season 3, Episode 7, the penultimate episode in this, right? Second to last, uh, The Bite. So, I don't even know what to do with this episode. Do you want to just start at the beginning? We'll, we'll just go with where the episode begins and just move yeah, through? Yeah, yeah. Okay. As well. um, um, do we start on the elevator or do we start with... We start with Oh, the sorry, mayor. we started. Yeah, we start at the county fair or the town fair, the 4th of July fair that the mayor is putting on. Yes. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It was a, I honestly I thought that it was a, a for this season and for what this show is, I thought it was a pretty fine introduction, a fine opening yeah. sequence. Yeah, it um uh I like that we got, you know, uh uh, Mike's parents and yeah. uh, and sister. 
Uh, mm-hmm. I thought that was really nice and that the sister, you know, notices like, hey, like there's something moving in the woods. Uh, that was really, really good. Um, and uh, I do have a complaint about the fireworks, though. Okay. Um, I feel like they sped up the fireworks. I, I've, I watch a lot of fireworks shows. Like I, <laughs> I yeah. go around and film them yeah. <laughs> during special events. And those fireworks, like, they seem to be moving extremely quick, quickly, um, you know, as they, like, spread out yep. uh, and dissipated. Uh, and they're, like, all the smoke from them just instantly vanished. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of like watching watching the opening night at the Beijing Olympics where China like superimposed extra fireworks. Do you do right. you remember this? Yes. Where they just put in like they had genuine fireworks, but then they put in extras that were just computer generated on a live broadcast. It was like fairly impressive that they were able to do that. But yeah, they just do that to make it look better. There's so much stuff in this uh season and in this episode in particular, where they're doing CGI for unknown reasons, right? Because yeah. you've got that with the fireworks, and then when they get on, what do they call it? The spaceship ride. The I always think of it as like Enterprise yeah, or the, Gravitron. The Gravitron. Gravitron. Yeah. yeah. So when they get on the spinning spaceship ride, like they obviously animated that, or they sped up that, but the everything else that's going on, like the lights above it and, or the flags above it, I noticed we're moving at a normal speed, but the ride itself, like that ride has never spun that fast ever. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I don't, I don't get it. Like it, it just, it seems that's why I'm saying that it feels like it's written. It's either written to be silly or it's written by somebody who's never gone to a fair and has never gone on one of these rides and has never gone to a fireworks show. It's, yeah, yeah, I uh, I not really even, don't understand it. Maybe not even written. It's directed. It's edited. It's mm-hmm. um, you know the special effects are being done, and I don't understand. Like fireworks are really not all that expensive. One would, I mean, like they are expensive, but like compared to doing a computer animation of fireworks, wouldn't it just make more sense just to actually have real fireworks in the sky? Yeah, I would think so. Like with you know, with where they're filming and everything, right. like, I don't see why it would be an issue. And, you know, yeah, even if, like, people are, you know, uh, spying on the production, you know, and they see that there are a bunch of fireworks going off, then it's like, well, yeah, you just say, yeah, it takes place during the 4th of July. And yeah. then that's all you need. <laughs> yeah, because I believe they're filming in the summer, like, last summer so it's like yeah this whole thing's taking place during the summer what do you want from us uh yeah, yeah. but in general i thought it was a, it was a pretty good opening sequence for this show at this point um and it is fun with the wheelers they continue to just be completely oblivious to anything that's happening with their kids like including right. their young daughter who's right there pointing at the trees and mrs wheeler and mr wheeler can't even be bothered to bring their eyes down for half a second to look at the trees <laughs> right. Yeah. But at the same time that it's like, I kind of get it because that does happen where, you know, parents are saying, hey, this is a special thing that you need to pay attention to. And the kid's like, yeah, I don't care. Right. <laughs> you yeah. know, you get them a, like, it's, hey, fireworks don't happen all the time. You can look at trees anytime you want. Like, right. Look yeah. where you're supposed to look. So it was fine. It was fine. Yeah. And then, I mean, also, Mr. Wheeler, though, and him being like, him like starting to get sick as soon as the ferris wheel oh. moved i was like okay this is like i don't know like there are some people who are particularly affected by ferris wheels um but it's not just a one and done thing like because then we see him yeah. later and it's just like i don't get it why why is he going on these things if he really doesn't enjoy them that much? Like, if he's getting sick just from the very beginning of the Ferris wheel moving, 
He should not ever be in a car. <laughs> good point. That's a really good point. Yeah, I don't I don't understand like little things like that that continue to be written into this show. It's like, oh, we'll really flesh out Mr. Wheeler as a character. Um, turns out he's not so comfortable with heights. It's like that was super necessary to the plot. I feel like I'm looking at a fully realized universe now that I know that about him. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, it's so overwritten. It's like coming up with rationales for all kinds of character behavior that really is unnecessary. It, it's just, yeah. yeah, I don't know. Um, all right, but after that, then we get um, uh, the whole showdown in the cabin. Right. right? Yes. Well, you get the, it goes to that, and then it goes to the elevator, and then it comes back to the cabin. So, ah, yes. right? And this whole thing of Will, who is the worst detector in the world now, that you hear, <laughs> like, the thudding in the woods, and then it's like, he's close. And it's like, he yeah. He knows where no. we are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he knows where we are. Uh, yeah, he knows where we are. And then, like, they go outside, and then they see this thing. And it drives me crazy, because I want to skip over the elevator thing for right now. So you get yeah. that. And it's like the Mind Flayer, based off of the speed that it's able to go, it's maybe 10 seconds away from yep. reaching them. And yet Nancy has time to go out to the shed, find a shotgun, get shells for it. Jonathan goes and finds an axe. The rest of them are rearranging the entire decor of the place, you know, putting up different shelves against windows, closing doors. And nobody's really running. They're, yeah. they're kind of... They're, they're moving at a, you know, a good jog, but nobody's sprinting from one place to the other, and then they just wait. That makes no sense. Like, the whole, I, I, I just don't get it why you had to show the Mind Flayer. If you want them, like, preparing the cabin, then have Will say, it's getting closer, but you don't see it yet. So then they go and do all of those things. Right. Yeah. But it doesn't make it more dramatic to see it and then show how long it's taking them to get ready, and then it finally shows up. Like, that didn't make things more tense. It pulls you out of the show. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, it's really, yeah, it's really <laughs> stupid to me. I honestly just, I, I, I can't help but think, like, because this is essentially what happens. They're like, oh, no, he's right there. All right, let's stay here. Even though yeah. we just complained about, he knows where we are. <laughs> but then after he attacks, then you go, oh, let's run away. I'm like, why didn't you just run away to begin with so that he wouldn't know where you were anymore? <laughs> I totally hear you. Yeah, it doesn't really make sense. Um, and then, like, the Mind Flayer, it's on the roof, and you can see, like, the dust falling through. And then Will gets it's his another wonderful line of overwritten dialogue he's close and it's like yeah. yeah no duh why did they give him this power if it's like it's not even a power <laughs> yeah yeah honestly it's uh uh very frustrating um all right but the mind flare attacks yeah. right or do you or do we want to go to the elevator yeah, I don't know. The Mind Flayer attacks. They yeah. fight it off. Yeah, everybody kind of uh, kind of hurts it, but not too much. Um, and Elvis. Eleven, yeah, she splits its head, but she gets bit on the leg by part of its tentacle thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, yeah, and then uh, that that's about all that happens, really. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't that's have much it. to say about it. Like, it's just kind of like, yeah, all right. They kind of fought it off a little bit, and we're good. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I, I don't know what to even say at this point. Um, and in any case, so, so the elevator, though. Yes. You cut back to Steve, Robin, Erica, and Dustin on the elevator. So, like... Well, they're driving on the cart, right? They crash, like, they're all drugged up, Steve and Robin, right? So they get them onto the elevator. And then this thing proceeds in CGI fashion to go at, like, 100 miles an hour 
doing a straight vertical through this shaft. And yet it takes, I looked at it because I, I, I rewatched that part again this morning. And it's like over a solid minute of screen time of them <laughs> on the elevator. And it's like, I'm trying to do the calculations, but they're passing a floor like at least every second. So, I mean, like, this thing's like a 10,000 story building. I don't even know, right? <laughs> like this elevator, is so, it's so ridiculously long. All that they have to do is just slow down the elevator and then have a reasonable depth to this. That's all yep. that they have to do. Well, why do they speed it up? It's like, I'm saying like the same thing with like the Gravitron ride. Why are they speeding it up? They are trying to add depth. <laughs> <laughs> trying to show how advanced soviet technology is at this point even though that belies historical fact but okay yes no but this is uh this is really um a a, a great metaphor for what um for what the the showrunners have been doing in general it's like oh well we want the show to be deeper <laughs> <laughs> so let's just manufacture it so that it looks like it's a deep thing. Yes. But it's but like it didn't need to be deep there. You can still have a lot of depth without yes. actually, you know, manufacturing this. <laughs> yeah, so much of this just feels manufactured, it's contrived, it's it's yeah. Um yeah. All right. So and then they go okay. to uh, back to the future. Yes. So at this point, yeah, they go into the theater and then they plop them down. They're watching Back to the Future. Okay. And then Dustin, he ends up contacting them, the, the other group, while they're in the grocery store with his walkie talkie. And like, it's staggering because then you do get the Back to the Future soundtrack playing on this. Like, yes. this show has directly become a parody because like you're literally using a different franchise's music at a similar moment where it's like doc and marty then you know they're con they're communicating by walkie talkie with that music going on and in this show it's really dramatic and you've got you know like this is the night that it needs to happen and then they're on walkie talkies yeah. with the back to the future soundtrack music playing <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah oh my goodness it's uh and i I'm fine with, you know, Dustin and, and them, like, sneaking into the movie theater. I am not fine with Dustin sneaking into the projector room. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good like, point. Like, how in the world did he get up there? <laughs> right. For, for all of, like, the security that this mall has, it also has no security. It's so strange that it's, like, they're only securing certain parts of it, I guess. But it's, like, the fact that these kids have been able to sneak into the movie theater all summer, no one is stopping them. And then you're right. He's able to get into the projection room. Like, yeah. uh, okay, that is a really good point. Because... <laughs> I'm sorry, but like projector rooms are not, you know, just like behind uh, an unlocked door that says, you know, staff only. No, it's going to be locked up. Like, <laughs> yeah, I imagine so. <laughs> well, I mean, I've yes. never tried to get into one, but yeah, I can't imagine Dustin just knows how to get in. But yeah. all right. Yeah. Because it's not like Steve works at the movie theater. Right. Yeah. So I don't know why Dustin has got this insight into the layout of its, you know, getting into employee only areas. Uh, all right. So like we cut over to them in the grocery store. And to me, this is like some of the, the some of the worst scenes that we get in this entire season. Um uh, First, you've got Nancy who's gonna take care of Eleven because they apparently go to the grocery store. Because it really is, like, yeah, it's a grocery store that they're in. So they go yeah. there presumably to go and get medical stuff to help with Eleven. I don't know why they broke in there and not into a pharmacy, but that's fine. So yeah. they go in there. Nancy's trying to be in charge. And then Max suddenly got a medical degree because she can skateboard. Right. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I get that she, uh, you know, has gotten a lot of scrapes and bruises over the years. But um, the idea that she knows how to, you know, treat puncture wounds. Right. And and everything like knows that, oh, no, no, no you don't want to disinfect it until you stop the bleeding. I'm like, like what are you talking about? Like, <laughs> well, that, that's, I think, what bothers me about it so much. And like, of course, I'm being silly when I say that she suddenly got a medical degree because this is like it's it's first aid. It, it's mm-hmm. it's not, you know, actually what a, a doctor would necessarily do. But um, what what bothers me about this is that she is just so derisive to anyone else of what are you guys doing? You don't know what you're doing. There's obviously an order to doing this. And how can you guys like let, you know what I mean? She is just, she's so condescending to everyone else. And right. I've, I mean, I was really active. I used to skateboard, um, lots of mountain biking. I've had lots of wounds. And the thing is I treated them without knowing what on earth I was doing. Right. Right. Just because she's had wounds of like from like skateboarding and injuries doesn't mean that she figured out the exact order of how to treat these things. And you're absolutely right. It's a puncture wound. So you can't be condescending, but also do this in with a wound that she very likely has never had unless she fell on like a bunch of nails or something like that, at like a construction site. And then her leg yeah. or her arm got all punctured. And then she treated it because she looked up ahead of time. How do I treat puncture wounds? <laughs> right. Yeah. That. That's honestly what I, what I was thinking. I'm like, so you're really bad at skateboarding. You're like crashing into like very sharp <laughs> like tree branches or something like how is this happening? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. And then she's just, she's so like, this is like when Max is so poorly written. Cause at times then she's fine in this season, Ooh. but this is like season two Max of she's too cool for this show. She's smarter than everyone else. Inexplicably. She somehow right. is smarter than everyone else. She's not like the, the boys in the group where they are the nerds of the school where they genuinely like they enjoy hanging out with their teacher outside of class time and they really like learning it's like max is too cool for school like i can't believe we're doing this i'm so smart i'm so above all of this i know everything always about every topic um and i don't even try how can you guys not know this like that's the attitude of just she knows everything her and erica like who is writing these terrible female characters it bugs me so much yeah, I I really don't know. I mean, um, I know that this episode is written by the Duffer Brothers, but when when it says written by, like, just, I mean, I know that you are aware of this, but if other people, if you don't know how this works, basically, you've got all of the writers from the show, your staff writers, they all get together, and, like, you could have a story credit where somebody comes up with the story idea, but then the actual teleplay is written by somebody else. But even once it's written then they do table reads so then you have other people making contributions so lines of dialogue get swapped a lot like it could be significantly different from the person who's actually getting credit for the teleplay yeah yeah um so that's why i'm saying like i don't know who wrote that because even though the duffer brothers are getting writing credit on this episode it doesn't necessarily mean that it's you know them who wrote max in this like with those particular lines yeah yeah okay and uh all right so then we get you know some uh uh some hilarious uh you know discussion between steve and robin about man what's this movie even about like you think she's trying to bang her son People in the 80s did not say bang. I can tell you that. Um, <laughs> I, I don't get too nitpicky about this, but like the idea of like banging somebody as a term, that didn't come out until the late 90s, as best I remember. But whatever, right. it's fine. I, I can forgive that. Yeah, but it just seems odd that they're like, that we spend a solid like two minutes watching these discussing the plot of Back to the Future and how ridiculous it is. It's like, yeah, we know the movie. You don't need to spend this time doing this. 
Right. As if there haven't already been so many other people who have done a much better job. And I think that we've talked about it on the podcast before, if not on the podcast, you and I have talked about it. But John Mulaney has got the absolute funniest description Mm -hmm. of Back to the Future. So John Mulaney, in case you don't know, he's an incredible stand up comedian. And if you just look it up, he's got a couple Netflix specials. Um, But you might be even be able to find like that section of because I can't remember which one in which one of his specials. but it is, it's the funniest description of the plot of Back to the Future ever. And genuinely, at this point, I, I can't see somebody doing a funnier version, like a, a funnier, um, you know, overview breakdown. of what, yeah, breakdown of what happens in the plot of Back to the Future. Like, I don't think anybody can beat what he did. And then Stranger yeah. Things thinks it, like, it just, it feels like so much of the comedy just feels like it, it's going for low-hanging fruit that Mm -hmm. they're not working for a really good joke it's just they're going for the most obvious stuff possible um yeah yeah and i mean it just it it just really bothers me that we spend honestly like a solid like two minutes of this episode watching those two discuss it and i'm like (sighs) stop wasting my time (laughs) <laughs> right. You get that. You get a lot of time of them tripping while they're looking at the lights from above. Mm-hmm. Then, uh, I mean, you do get the backstory, which I didn't really have a problem with, but I guess I have an issue with where it's showing up in this season of her explaining to Steve that, you know, that she's actually a lesbian and that she was obsessed with him. And it's such a fake out of them. They, they, like, I think we're supposed to identify with Steve where it's supposed to be like, whoa, that's so surprising. We were sure that she was really into Steve because she said that she was obsessed with him. Right. And then it's like, I was obsessed with you for all these other reasons. It's like, that's not a good surprise. That's a cheap surprise. Do, do you know what I mean? It's I like, do. Yeah, yeah, we totally believed that she was really into Steve because she said that she was obsessed with him and she couldn't stop staring at him. And she's upset and that, she, that he didn't knew even know. Exactly what he ate. Her and <laughs> right, exactly. And then, so it doesn't make us feel like, it. I know what they're doing. We're supposed to identify with Steve and go, oh, we totally misread this. And it's like, we totally misread this because we were totally misled. Right. That, Yes, that doesn't make me feel stupid. That makes me feel like you didn't um, give me fair information. Yeah, yeah, because I do think that it's uh, that it's a decent reveal in in concept. But you're right with you know the the previous discussion of right. like her being obsessed, and that's what undercuts it because exactly. it, it's it's really great to you know, have had, like, the entire season, you know, like, Dustin especially egging, uh, you know, Steve on, just being yeah. like, yeah, you, you know, you and Robin, you, you would totally be perfect together, and then to have this moment toward the end where Robin has to, you know, confess something that is obviously very difficult for her to uh, uh, yes. to talk about. Um, uh, and, uh, <laughs> and, yeah, like, I think that that scene is done well. But because of the previous one, then then yeah, it just doesn't work because of the the, the scene where she had talked about um, being obsessed with Steve. Yes, exactly. And and that's part and, and the other issue that I have, which I, I briefly mentioned, is the placement of this scene within the season. Because I do think that it actually is an interesting um uh, component to her character right Mm -hmm. unlike finding out about mr wheeler and like turns out he's scared of heights (laughs) it's like (laughs) it's really that necessary but with robin and this whole dynamic between her and steve and the fact that you know she's been keeping this thing a secret and this is partially what explains why she feels like she's such an outsider um you know that you get all of, of that and then you find out why and for the mid 80s that it's it's difficult for any person who um you know is is growing up gay and they don't quite know how to come out and explain this to everybody uh regardless of when like what year this is then it's difficult but certainly in the mid 80s that's you know much more difficult than it would be today so yeah all of that stuff is 
good, but I don't know why it's showing up at this point in the episode. It, like to me, it would have made more sense when they were drugged up and they and she thought that she was going to die. Right. That yeah. she would finally like want to tell him instead of making it seem at that point that she was in love with him, which is what you got instead at that moment. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, I, I, the right. other thing, I, I just wanted to also um, briefly talk about this. I think it's in this episode where she talks about this idea. Maybe it was in the previous one where she says how Steve is part of the the popular group and all of this. And, you know, she's been such a weirdo and she's an outsider and how she desperately wants in because every person who's not part of the popular group secretly longs for that acceptance and to be cool and to be part of the popular group. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't remember the exact like dialogue that she says, but yeah, there's, there's definitely like that moment and it's, um, no, there are a lot of people who, like, choose to be an outsider who, like, you know, are perfectly fine with it. <laughs> right. That's what, like, to me, this just feels like it's written by somebody who really doesn't know. It's like, it feels like it was written by somebody who was part of the popular group. And they're like, you know that all those losers, they really want to be at this party. You know that all those losers, they really want to be part of our group and they want to be accepted. But they can't be because they're losers. But they desperately want in. It, it feels like, because like she says, you know, even though we pretend like we don't care, we really do care. We really do want your acceptance. We really do want to be invited to this part, to those parties and be cool and be popular and I can tell you as somebody in high school who did not hang out with the popular kids like I got invited to parties I didn't go because I didn't want to be friends with them they yeah like and so I would be kind of like Robin in that case and it's like yeah actually not everybody who is an outsider in high school is resenting this and just see Secretly longs to be part of the popular group. If only I could get in. It's like, no, some people genuinely don't care. But all right, she gets to speak on behalf of everybody somehow because she's drugged up and yeah, she gets this insight into the human psyche. And I'm just like, uh, nope, incorrect. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, all right. So we get some additional, uh, uh, back and forth between all right let, let's keep on this romantic tension um, topic uh, Mike and Eleven are discussing love without actually discussing love um, yeah it makes no sense to me why he can't just say it why he acts yeah. like it's such a weird thing to say old people say it and you know because he had previously said that he loves her and then yeah. all of his 13 year old or 14 year old friends just freaked out that right. he said that but 11 didn't hear it and it's just like yeah what else is he thinking what else is he feeling at this point why is this a surprise <laughs> yeah no i i i, I don't know it, it it's again one of those moments where I think that that scene would have been fine if we didn't have the previous scene where he, you know, came out and said it. Um, yeah. But, yeah, um, I think that's fair. The the other, do you have other stuff to say with that? Because I want to talk about other stuff going on in the grocery store. Um, no, that's about it. Yeah. Okay. So some of the other things that happen here, Max orders lucas and will to go and find a bowl so then yeah. as if there's going to be a bowl in the grocery store because a grocery store also has you know dishware but okay and then they go idiotically i don't understand how these kids are so smart but then they're so stupid they go to the cereal aisle and then they have their lovely little banter of what else do you use a bowl for except for cereal why don't they have bowls next to the cereal and it's like what are you guys talking about? Like that? Have you ever been in a grocery store before? These are supposed to be smart kids. Yeah, apparently <laughs> they have not. Cause yeah, and also I guess they've never had ice cream that wasn't on a cone. Uh, <laughs> you <know>. Soup, <laughs> soup. Uh, you know, there are so many things that you use a bowl for. 
and they're just like, oh yeah, cereal. That's the only thing that bowls are good for. Well, it's just everything about this is just it doesn't make sense how Max is a doctor all of a sudden. It doesn't make sense mm-hmm. that she believes that they will just find a bowl. Go get a bowl. Not see right. if you can find a bowl in this place. But right. go get yeah. that, right? So it's like she knows that there's a bowl like or a whole bowl section in the grocery store and then these guys who were smart are now suddenly stupid and all of this is supposed to be i think for laughs right yeah but none of it feel like none of it to me is working yeah Um, no it's it's all uh, i don't know because then they find fireworks instead yeah lucas doesn't understand anything about what else a bowl can be used for but he can calculate how many grains of (laughs) of um you know like gunpowder make up one stick of dynamite and are like are contained within this particular firework like suddenly he's smart again right he went from being like just completely incompetent like a homer simpson type of character to now he's really really intelligent all of a sudden like he yep. returns that, um, yeah, and then and, you get, and that's really frustrating when Max shows up and she's like, "What are you guys doing? You, yeah. This isn't a bowl." It's like, and what is she doing? She was yeah. supposed to be tending to eleven, and then it's like, if you can walk around, if you don't have to be at her side, why don't you go and find the bowl section? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that whole, uh, what what good are fireworks? Um, I'm pretty sure literally anybody can uh, can figure out that fireworks would right. do some damage at the very right. least. Yeah, Will is stupid again. <laughs> and it's just, yeah. they're, they're, there's no consistency with these characters. It's whatever they want them to be in that moment, that's what they are. And yeah. it's it's just, it's to me, it's the worst kind of writing. Because what you ought to do when you're writing characters is figure out who that person is. And then you put them into a situation where they respond according to their character, according to their personality, according to their background, their intelligence, where they're making decisions and they're saying dialogue that fits for who they are. But instead they're just, they'll all of a sudden they'll make them super smart if they think they're going to get a laugh or they'll make them super stupid if they think they'll get a laugh or they'll make them super smart or super stupid to advance the plot or frustrate the plot. It's just they're getting them to do things that are inconsistent with the characters that were already established. And yeah. Yeah, yeah. no, absolutely. Um, you have the, right. the, the new Coke band. Oh. Oh, We've got to yes. talk about that because you brought this up before that this show is I basically <laughs> the new Coke. And then you get this moment of metafiction where they're talking about John Carpenter's remake of The Thing and how it's like that's better than the original. And, of course, New Coke was like Coke redesigned their product in the mid 80s. They came out with New Coke and they stopped selling Coca-Cola Classic like the original. I don't think they yeah. called it Classic at the time. And right. then a lot of people hated this. But he apparently is one of the people who loves the change and how you can't get the old one anymore. So now you get that new and different one. And everybody yeah. else is like, no, we liked the original. Why do we have this new awful thing? And that is exactly what is happening with Stranger Things. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. Oh, my goodness. It was incredible to see that actually play out right as if they put that on the show it's like that is exactly that's why i'm saying it's a moment of metafiction because that's exactly what is happening with this show you have people who like season one who are saying i liked the original this what we have now is so different from what it used to be and i i have said this multiple times on the podcast i would be fine with this funny version if I could still have the original version, right? Like if right. you did yeah. basically a spinoff of Stranger Things where it's like you get like a comedy version of it. But right. instead, it's like, well, what happened to the original? I want more of that. It's like, you don't, ha- you can't have that anymore. It's unavailable. Well, why'd you change it? Because we wanted to do something new and different. But there was nothing wrong with the original. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh oh man, and we it, we spend so much time on it that it's <laughs> it's again something that like is a time filler. But I I was literally just like this is exactly what I was talking about. It is like, and it's I exactly love, what you're talking about. 
I love how Mike is so upset at Lucas. Like, what are you like talking about? This is not as good. It's it's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Mike actually gets to speak on behalf of fans of the first season. He's like, yes. how can you even drink that? How can you enjoy that? And that's how the rest <laughs> of the system feels. It's like, look, I'm watching this because it's like, well, if there is no other Coke available, I guess I'll drink this. But I don't like this. It's not as good as the original. That's how it feels watching season three. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it was great. It was great that that was in there because I'm like, there you go. If you want to understand how we feel, just watch that yeah. little scene. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but yeah, the, the the thing with John Carpenter's The Thing <laughs> and everything, and I'm just like, that was like, such a weird comparison as well like i'm just like oh okay that's i don't know it felt i guess my main complaint with that is that lucas and and the rest of the gang here has all seen both versions of the thing <laughs> when they're this young and i'm just like yeah, no, I don't think so. Like, That's maybe really they've seen hard the new one, to, but... <laughs> in the 80s when, right. like, Betamax and VHS were still in their infancy, and then yeah, the availability... doesn't even know how to work it in Stranger Things 2. Right. And the availability of these old titles, like, I don't know whether the original and John Carpenter's The Thing were both available, or whether... Yeah, like, it just, like, okay, whatever. Yeah. Uh, oh man okay um so there is an another plot line that we haven't even talked about because i forgot about it briefly uh <laughs> which is the whole stuff with joyce hopper uh alexi and uh murray yes and um uh yeah more romantic tension here and exactly what we said would happen with murray like, pointing out, like, oh, yeah, there's so much sexual tension between you two. Uh-huh. It, it's just uh, a repeat of what you had with Jonathan and Nancy from season two. And, you know, oh, it's even funnier and more clever the second time we get this unrealistic piece of dialogue. Yep. And, uh, oh, of course, Alexi is blown away by this as well. He's like, what, they haven't yet? Like, uh, Yeah, because oh they've just got this super insight into how people interact, and it's uh-huh, of course the Soviet scientist knows how to read all of that, you know, tension when he doesn't even understand the language and it's a whole other culture and he's known them only during this, you know, very brief moment of intense stress for both Hopper and Joyce. And he's got all this insight into them. Okay, yeah, and the reason why, like, and I think the writers would say, well, I guess it's not supposed to be realistic, but it's funny. And it's like, no, it's not. Uh, I yeah. just, I continue to come back to this. If you want to make this show a comedy, get actual comedy writers instead of doing this hack comedy writing. Yeah, yeah. And so we also get a bit more dialogue about Sam Owens and the U.S. government and everything, where Hopper is now unconvinced that they actually will show up. Even though, like, last episode made it seem like it was very clear that they were actually going to be yeah. coming faster now that Joyce had spoken to the guy. So I'm like, like, what? Why? <laughs> this entire thing just is so frustrating because it just, it feels so contrived of why yeah. is Joyce convinced that her children are immediately in danger? Why is mm -hmm. she convinced that they're in danger if they're at the fair? Um, mm -hmm. You know, the, this whole thing, whatever. Okay. And then like, yeah, they find the wheelers. They get on Gravitron, and then the thing takes off and immediately is pulling, like, six Gs. Right, yes. Immediately. And yeah. you get this caricature of a carny, of that woman, you know, like, ah, take a seat, Magnum, or whatever she says. Right. Okay, also, uh, on that note, um, when did Joyce and Hopper uh, buy tickets? Buy their <laughs> tickets? I, I agree. I thought that was an issue as well, but okay. <laughs> Because um, I mean, they make a good point of showing off that there are being that there are tickets being sold at this carnival. Yes, <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> but no, Joyce and Hopper are just able to walk right onto the Gravitron. Oh, my friend is in there. Oh, all right, go ahead. <laughs> right, right, because that's how it works. Um, yeah. Now, I, okay, I will say, here's, a, here's some positive um, commentary about this episode. I liked the interaction between Murray and Alexi, where mm. Murray is explaining how the games are all rigged, and then, you know, um, Alexi doesn't believe him. He's saying they don't look rigged, and then he's saying this is a metaphor for America, that the entire system itself is rigged, where you know, the wealth, like he basically makes a Marxist critique of the American economic system, uh, mm -hmm. saying that it looks like it's fair. It gives the illusion of being fair and transparent. You can see exactly how the rules work, but ultimately the entire thing is rigged, tilted towards the owners. And that's exactly the argument that Marx made towards, you know, the bourgeoisie versus the proletariat, that it, it, all of the wealth is going towards the bourgeoisie, the factory owners, and, and it's not going towards the workers. So it's an unfair system. But Alexei doesn't believe this because he is, at this point, a Soviet defector. Right. Because he is actively working for them. And it seems that he does have an appreciation for American culture, the American economy, um, uh, you know, America as a nation that he has an appreciation for. And he's saying, but it doesn't look rigged. And then he goes and plays the game and then he wins, you know, suggesting that it's like, yeah, even though it's tough to win, it's not actually rigged. It's just, it's challenging to be successful in the free market of a capitalist country. But Alexi has got that gumption and he's able to do it. And he's got the skills so he can succeed in this country. And it kind of disproves because it almost seems like Murray is more of a communist than Alexi is. Okay? Yes. Yeah. And, yeah. No, it's it, it is fantastic uh, to, to see that, you know, criticism of the United States and to have, you know, like, I don't know, this whole thing of Murray being so jaded to America yes. and Alexi is looking at it being like, no, like this all looks amazing. There's nothing like this in Russia. Like, right. <laughs> that, you don't exactly. know what you're talking about. <laughs> right. That it's the criticism because it is basically the, the criticism and the defense of America and its economic model. You get both of them in that interaction. And it's interesting that the American is pointing out all of the criticism, but the outsider is actually saying, no, no, this really does seem good. And that does tend to be what happens. Like, think about all of the, the this continues to be true, all of the, the millions of people around the world who are desperately trying to immigrate into the United States, but people who were born and raised in the United States, then they have all the criticism of the country. And it's like, and it's not that those criticisms are invalid um, at times, like certainly not all of them are invalid, but it's also like, but what's the alternative? Right. That. Right. And so and it, it just it does seem like I actually really liked that where then Alexi wins. He wins Woody Woodpecker. Um, and it, yeah. they've already established that he likes American cartoons. I mm -hmm. really don't know how he actually communicated with the carny to play the game. Right. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know how he understood the rules. Like, you have to get like five green balloons in order to win a prize at the top. But right. he, he somehow understood all of that. He also understands how to high five. I don't know if they do that in Soviet Russia. <laughs> Comrade, <laughs> give me five. But <laughs> anyway, yeah. but then he wins and then he immediately gets killed. And I actually thought that was all really good. That that was a moment yeah. of tragedy within this show where it has been begging for anything that looks anything close to stakes for anybody yes. that as if anybody's life is in danger and it's like finally you you see that and it's and it's tragic because he seems like he really is on the american side that he mm -hmm. really does have issues with the soviet union and communism in general that he wants to become an american citizen and that he'll probably be a benefit to the country uh, yeah. And then he dies right, right. after he, he really believes like he thinks the American dream is not an illusion. It is real and I can be successful. And yeah, then it's over. I, I think that it, it, it's it's done so well, uh, especially with him holding, you know, like the Woody Woodpecker and yeah. being shot through Woody Woodpecker. Yeah. 
it's almost like he's trying to, you know, like defend use the United States, yeah, as, as a defense. His defense. But it's not uh, enough. Yeah. Uh, it. It. Yeah. So it's. It's really, really incredible. Um, and you know, Murray. <laughs> oh my goodness. The the shot of Murray, you know, with the corn dogs, yeah. and it's. It actually works there because yeah. you're like, oh yeah, he's such a ridiculous character. But then once like Alexi gets shot and it's the slow mo of him like not realizing what's going on. Yeah. Like that is really good. That That's... entire thing was yeah. And, and so and I, I want to point this out that as negative as I have been, as critical as I've been of the writing, the reason why is because this show has been so mm -hmm. well written and it has the ability to be so good and this was a moment where i'm like that was genuinely good and that was such a great piece of writing where it's like using carnival games and saying that like they it's the illusion of fairness but it's not really and it ultimately goes to the owners and saying that to a communist like somebody who's grown up in a communist country who believes in america that it's like it just it worked so well it wasn't overwritten it was it wasn't subtle yeah. the way some of the the good writing on this show is but it was so on point it was yes. just it was it was really and well done and, and it's during the fourth of july celebration yeah in, yeah in, which Both i think independence and yeah, yeah. celebrating um, independence which alexi wants but he just can't get yeah yeah it's uh it, that it, that honestly is is so good yeah um, in an episode that's got almost entirely <laughs> bad stuff this was right like it's like 95 percent bad and then that five percent is really good yeah yeah um all right so we've got uh uh then hopper is being chased by the terminator yep and there are multiple Terminators now. <laughs> there sure are. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, man, there are so many Russians in Hawkins. And because <laughs> there are a bunch of them in the mall. In the and mall. then there are all the ones that are at, at the, the carnival. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. um, and they're all, I don't know. I, I do think that it's really funny that... Um, you know, earlier in this season, then Dustin was like, oh, you know, those Russians with, like, you know, long blonde hair and everything. And I don't think I've seen a single blonde-haired Russian in right. this entire thing. Right. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so Hopper gets chased. Um, it's it's really fun to see him, you know, be chased through the, uh, the funhouse. Um, although... I, in my experience, there's no way that that funhouse has all of those things working. <laughs> They're not all working. Definitely not. And that also <laughs> seems a fair bit bigger. I, I oh, yeah. Wrong, but a fair bit bigger. I've been in a bunch of those. A bunch of those. And it's just, it's a single trailer. Like, it goes yeah. down the road. And so even if it pops out at parts, like, that thing was, there are too many elements to it. Yeah, yeah. But that's fine. Um, Whatever. Yep. Yeah. Uh... Of course, the, uh, the the car pulls up as soon as Hopper hops out of the back of the funhouse. Oh, yeah. He just tells Joy to pull around <laughs> back. Back? What does that mean? Back of what? Back of... <laughs> the thing goes deep. It's like a rectangle. There are right. three backs to it. There's the back of this side and then of this side. It makes no sense. Yeah, he says, don't... Like, he doesn't say, like, come around back like to the back side of the the fun house or nope. anything like or just... i'm heading to the fun house come around back <laughs> you know no just she just happens to see him like right there as she's driving by one of the three backs of this <laughs> correct yeah it's a cartoon it's a cartoon because she's exactly where she needs to be and then he just jumps in and it's it's a cartoon that somehow has stakes but right because then we immediately get hopper being like alexi and you know, like right. nobody says anything, and that's really well done. <laughs> right, that's the thing. And it went from like it was serious, and then it was kind of silly with the car showing up, and then it becomes serious again. And it's just like, Argh! like yeah. how do you guys like forget how to make a compelling show, and then you remember, and then you forget, and then you remember, and then you forget within the same episode? Yeah, 
Yeah. All right. So those guys are all heading to Starcourt now. Um, but I do want to mention that a silencer on a pistol does not make the gun completely silent. No, they're not even like, called silencers by people in like who are in the know. They're suppressors. Right. Yes. <laughs> it's and the fact that it's, you know, <laughs> there are people walking around. Nobody notices that this guy has a gunshot to the center of his chest. Like or, he got or, shot through the spine. Right. Yeah. Like that thing, yeah. like because it went like just underneath the solar plexus. And it was in the center of his torso. There's no way that thing, because there's nothing stopping. It didn't hit, like, his ribs. It wasn't high enough. So, therefore, mm. it went directly into his spine. And yet, he's able to still stumble around. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, anybody who's, who's this is just very brief. Anybody who watched the last UFC event, UFC 239 from this weekend, Ben Askren got, like, kneed in the head, and he became stiff as a board before he hit the ground. That was, <laughs> like, and he's fine. Like, he didn't get a broken neck or anything. The idea that Alexi, or Alexi, is able to, like, oh, like, and hold it together long enough to get somewhere safe, even though he's been shot through his body. Okay. Yeah sure yeah no I, so as much as we say you know like that it was really well done there right. are still elements yeah. where it's like yeah. oh okay <laughs> they just needed um, to have him get shot somewhere else right yeah um yeah and if you know if the terminator had like stepped right up to the um to the woody woodpecker plush thing then that would have helped with the sound even more yes um, Agreed. But, yeah. Anyway, uh, I'm not an expert. <laughs> no, me neither. Um, but yes. So, all right. So that's all. Everything that happens with Alexi and Joyce and Hopper and all that, right? Mm -hmm. um, back at Starcourt, um, the entire gang meets up there. Um, or, okay. <laughs> what happens next? Uh, so Dustin and Erica, Steve, Robin, they're all hiding in the food court. Yeah, because hiding. They, because they were not able to get past the uh, bag checks, <laughs> these Soviet bag checkers, mm -hmm. which nobody else seems to have a problem with. Oh, no. this wasn't a thing before, but okay, yeah, it's, <laughs> I no guess you just one, have it today. It doesn't make any sense. This is literally the 4th of July, mid-80s, middle America, and not a single person is saying, it's none of your business. This is literally our day to celebrate our independence from government tyranny and I'm leaving yeah. the theater to go to my personal vehicle and you're going to check my stuff. No one gives him a hard time. Like, yeah. I mean. Also, okay, mid 80s, um, 4th of July, would the theater even have been open? I think so, right? Because okay. isn't 4th of July weekend like a big, you know, that's when the blockbusters come out. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, that's true. All right. Um, cause the rest of them all is closed. So yeah, that, all right, that's good. <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, so, uh, so they're being chased in the food court. They hide somewhere. The Russians know where they are. And then the, the car starts to move. And, um, I actually really love how that's done. How the car alarm goes off. At first I was like, Oh, well, why did the car alarm go off, like, you know, right away or whatever? But then I was like, oh, because, like, Eleven, like, started moving the car and she was doing, trying to do it, like, subtly or whatever. Um, or, you know, like, it took effort. Yeah. But as soon as the car started to move, then the alarm went off. Um, so I, I, I think that that's actually really done uh, pretty well. And how she just throws it into all the Russians is really awesome. <laughs> I guess I I'm a little her skills are confusing to me because she she just I mean I guess it works well enough like I don't know she's obviously much stronger than she was in season one right right and then I guess because her you know Department of Energy sister eight taught her how to use the force then she's now a lot stronger because 
her sister just stood beside her and was just like, think about how angry you are. And therefore, right. you now become a hundred times stronger than you ever were before. And it's like, that's all she needed. Just one little pep talk. And then, right. like, it wasn't like showing her working up with her mental skills or anything like that. Mm. It's just one conversation from her, from eight standing beside her with trying to move the train car. Uh, but anyway, she splits the Mind Flayer's head. And then instead of just throwing the guys, she throws the car at the guys. Mm. So she does the much more difficult thing to do. Now, I understand that she collapses after this. Uh, but it seems more like she's collapsing because of the leg wound and not even because of the exertion of mental energy. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, it seems like it might be easier for her to lift one object or move one object than several. Um, okay. That I, I, I don't know. That's That seems to be like how they've kind of framed it. <laughs> um, but, All uh, right. I'll go with that. Yeah. Um, but yes, okay, so then her leg wound is acting up. Uh, she she gets a headache. Um, and wh what is the sound that's that's playing? Like, because there's like some, some kind of thing that's like going on that she's hearing, right? I can't remember what the sound is, but it's like on the leg that you see movement, right? Yeah. That's something yeah, like inside inside yeah <laughs> and it's because it seems to be i'm trying to because i did rewatch, like I, I kind of flipped through the episode just before we did this to remind myself uh but billy shows up at the grocery store after they've left he finds eleven's blood and i was sure that he was going to do like the simpsons episode where they're on the island it's the lord of the flies parody right then like nelson like grabs the blood and he's like the hunt is on where he does like <laughs> i was sure he was going to do that because that's what i think of the show at this point you know oh, anyway man. so he like grabs the blood and he like his eyes like his pupils dilate and like he gets like the black veins and it's almost right. like oh now i know that some of the saliva from the mind flayer is in her so now i can activate that to attack her I think is what's happening. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah, me when he trying did that, to then, understand it. Yeah. When, when he did that, then like when he went down to like touch the blood, I literally thought that he was just going to absorb it into his own body. Um, you know, more goo for the goo monster. Yeah. <laughs> um, Cause I'm still not quite sure what's going on there. Um, the goo monster wanted to be as big as possible, but it still wants Billy to be separate. Apparently. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. But anyway, okay, so there's some weird connection that's that's going on between uh, between Eleven's leg wound and um, uh, uh, and the Mind Flayer. And I, I it, it, it looks like it seems really promising. Uh -huh. um, so I'm looking forward to seeing what happens next. But it is still just, I don't know. I'm, I'm not ready for the series to be, or for the season to be over. But I just, I feel like there's been so much wasted time. And at this point, I'm just like, yeah, let's just see how this ends. Because you've wasted too much of my time already. That's... That's how I've been feeling from the very first episode. Because remember, I brought this up with the first episode. I just said, you're only going to get so many within a season because it's a Netflix show. And so we went eight episodes, nine episodes, and now eight episodes again. So you've got yeah. a very limited amount of time to actually get your story out there. It's not like a 24-episode season that you get on network television where it's like, yeah, yeah you can kind of, you know, let the characters vamp a little bit at times in this and have these little like asides where it's like whatever if it works for you it works for you and if not who cares but this is every moment of this is should be considered fairly critical because you don't have a lot of actual screen time considering that you're trying to get an entire season of a show it you know all into this um they've got 
they have so many plot elements in this, which I really, really like compared to season two. I like the yeah. fact that you've got the Russians who have invaded Hawkins. You're maybe going to get the U.S. military that's going to show up to try to take them out. You've got the pod people going on while at the same time having the mind flare you know that the upside down is right on the other side of what the russians are doing that they're opening up the gate so that could unleash who knows what um you know you've got so much going on in this season and yet so much of it is being spent on stupid gags yeah yeah gags and just like I don't know, wasted time of let's discuss the plot of Back to the Future. And right. uh, yeah, I don't know. So the next episode is the battle of of Starcourt or for Starcourt. I'm not quite sure. But anyway, they're going to all be fighting in the in the mall. Yeah. Um, and by all fighting, I don't know if that includes more Russians uh or just the mind flayer and the gang or or what if billy is going to you know be fighting himself or <laughs> like you know what i mean like if yeah. he himself is going to be fighting um but uh yeah should be interesting hopefully <laughs> yeah there's a lot that they're gonna have to wrap up if they want this all wrapped up at the end of this and the first two seasons, the last episode, then it has left like 20 minutes after the climax to mm. have their denouement, you know, where it has all the falling right. action. They've left a lot of time to get to everything else. So if that's the case, then it's like we're going to have maybe like 35, 40 minutes and then it's going to be all wrapped up essentially, like as far as the climax like yeah well yeah i mean the the last episode uh i did notice is an hour and 17 minutes oh okay okay so yeah so it, we'll we'll get a little bit more that way but uh okay yeah. uh, do you have any predictions um i'm i'm not sure i i i don't want to say that i want to see this but i feel like it would be a bold move if they had to like amputate Eleven's leg. Oh. Um, that would be that'd be interesting, but maybe a little bit too Walking Dead. <laughs> <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I feel like Murray is be a, a, a big character um, for the future, so he's not going anywhere. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I could maybe see, as much as I would hate it, I could maybe see Steve dying. Uh-huh. Just because I feel like his story is kind of wrapped up at this point. It really is. I mean, they don't know what to do with him. Um, mm -hmm. Same thing with, with even, like, Dustin, they could throw him back into the regular group, but Dustin doesn't what does he have to contribute right that will yeah. has got his connection to the upside down lucas kind has of. got his dynamic with yeah kind of <laughs> but <laughs> lucas has got his dynamic with max right the way mm -hmm. they interact and then you've got mike and 11 who are of course together and then it's like but dustin's just kind of out there on his own and right. steve now that he's not with nancy anymore because now nancy and jonathan are together and jonathan of mm -hmm. course is connected to will and then she's connected to mike so it's like those two like that's all part of the group but then it really is a whole separate thing over here with steve and dustin and it's just like they were critical parts of the group, but not so much anymore. And they did a clever thing with having them have their own little mission in this season, which I liked. Yeah. Um, and I liked the addition of Eric, uh, of uh, Robin. I hated the addition of Erica. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah. but I don't know. Yeah, I could see Steve maybe not making it. My, my thing is, my only prediction is that something's going to come up with Dustin's girlfriend. And I imagine that she is going to be real and she is going to be prettier than whoever he continues to refer to. <laughs> yes, that's true. Because yeah. I feel like they've referred to it like 
enough times and then it kind of disappeared but then she's going to show up at the end and they're going to be like what and he's going to be like it's going to just be totally played for comedy it's going to be him saying like i told you guys she's prettier than whoever it was you know right. yeah. and they're going to be like what and he's like yeah blah, blah, blah. and it's the farrah fawcett spray farrah fawcett you know like hairspray and that's what does right. it guys like it's going to be this whole comedic thing that's my yeah. only prediction. I think that's yeah. going to come up again. <laughs> or, yeah, yeah. I, I could see them hold off uh, until next season to do that. Yeah. But, but yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. I'm just saying that that's um, like, what else does Dustin have going for him at this point? Right. Yeah. Yeah, I think that the Russians are probably going to open the gate. Uh, and in the process, they're all going to die. Like, all, all the Russians are going to die. Oh, that'd be a good way of taking care of them. Like, that'd yeah. be an efficient way of dealing with that. Because otherwise, you're going to have to have this epic battle between them and the Americans. And which, it's just, it's getting to the point, and I've pointed it out before, that, like, this show is becoming more MCU-like, less connected right. to our reality. And it's, like, almost like this is a whole other um, dimension, right like a whole other universe that we're watching it, it it's ours but then it's diverging a fair bit because yeah. if you're going to have this epic battle between the american military and the soviet military in indiana in the 80s it can't get too big or we would have all heard of it right. so if this thing becomes this epic battle then it's going to be like, okay, well, it's not our world anymore. So you right. can't convince me that this stuff has actually happened in our world. Like, this is the issue with superhero stories in general. It's like, you just have, you can't say that it's our world. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's why superhero origin stories work much better than pretty much any other <laughs> story. But, exactly. Uh, yeah. 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 So I don't know. I think that probably would be a better way of dealing with it than having the U.S. military fighting them is just yeah. they open up the gate and then just, you know, they all get taken out. But they're still going to have this issue of how to, you know, like fix it. I am interested that we haven't heard even a reference to Eleven Sister to Eight. Um, yeah. There hasn't been anything referring to Brenner in this because you mm -hmm. did get that reference to Brenner like this whole we got to track down everybody from this and maybe it's going to be that that's a season four storyline that comes back yeah I just thought that this would have been better if like you make the stakes so high where it's like Eleven cannot possibly defeat this thing on her own that she has to recruit her siblings right yeah. other people yeah. who've got powers that would I think that would be a fun way of continuing this storyline. Absolutely. Yeah. It doesn't seem like we're going to get that. No. <laughs> Cuz it's all going to it's all going to get wrapped up like, you know, in, within the same evening. Yeah. So she's not going to have time to contact these people like, "Hang on, let me briefly research who else was kidnapped by the Department of Energy and developed who knows what powers. Then let's find out what those powers are. Now let's bring that character in to deal with the threat." Yeah. So uh let, let's uh it it's so frustrating to uh to know that there is that possibility in the future, but that like, oh, we're not going to get that until season 4 or 5. Like, whenever those happen. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, I... But anyway, I, next episode should be good. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. I'm not, especially, but that's okay. I mean, it can't be worse than, you know, some of the stuff we've gotten. No, you're right. You're right. It, it <laughs> I'm sure, will be one of the more satisfying episodes in the season. So. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Well, we're going to move on to the next one. And um, if anyone wants to comment below on what you thought of this episode, then feel free to do so. And mm -hmm. yeah, we're good. Yep. All right. Well, thanks so much for watching, folks. Bye. Bye. Ignore the bell, people. We're going to keep going. I, we're still ignoring it. Don't worry. I, I, I don't know what that... I think that's the fire drill. All right, we're just, we're gonna go home. Yeah, all right, we're done. <laughs>